Cruise fans are a very passionate group of people who love to cruise and love to share their excitement of cruises. And just like any group of fans, they tend to have a unique way of looking at things. Today, I've got the top eight things that people that go on cruises all the time seem to say all the time. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and I thought a little change of pace today. I wanted to share the things that I see all the time being posted by people that like to cruise a lot. You know, cruise fans, as I said, are a very passionate bunch. As, as a cruise fan, I have to tell you, I love to be able to obviously share in that fun and that excitement of going on a cruise. And if you watch enough of these YouTube videos, or better yet, read the comments below the video, or go on a message board, or on a Facebook group, you're going to see plenty of opinions about a lot of different things. And inevitably, you're going to see a lot of repetition of some tropes and memes, if you will, that cruise fans tend to say all the time. And it kind of got me thinking, you know, there's definitely a top, well, in this case, eight list of things that I see people post all the time about cruises. And I wanted to talk about it today, a little fun way to look at the cruise fan community. And let me know if you've seen these as well, because I, I see them all the time. Sometimes I shake my head. Sometimes I'm like, yep, I, I'm expecting that. And other times it's just a good laugh. So from one repeat cruiser to another, here are the most common things I see repeat cruisers posting all the time. Let's start with number one. And this is when I roll my eyes at, I wish there was a no kids cruise. Royal Caribbean has always been a family cruise line. And yet there are a certain contingent of cruisers who clamor for a mythical no children sailing. Usually this comment comes up when things like kids sale free deals appear or when family cruising is being discussed. Now, most seem just to prefer times of the year when there are less children on a ship, while others really do wish for like a virgin voyages approach in which children are not allowed. Quite frankly, I'm kind of always surprised by this comment because again, Royal Caribbean is a family cruise line. They've never been adults only. And the idea that that would ever exist seems kind of, it's like asking a vegetarian option at a steakhouse. I mean, it just seems contradictory, but yet there's always people who post this. And of course I have kids, so I roll my eyes at it, but I roll my eyes at it even before I had kids because again, it's always been a family cruise line. However, it's definitely something that gets mentioned all the time. Next up is the comment that the sales are all the same. When there's a new promotion or offer announced by Royal Caribbean, a lot of repeat cruisers tend to roll their eyes at that, and they say that the sales are all the same and the prices never change. There is a bit of truth to what they say, in that every new Royal Caribbean promotion does not necessarily mean additional savings. The price of a sailing varies, and unlike a sale on jeans in a retail store where a fixed discount is applied across the board, cruise fare pricing is much less generic. The price of a sailing can fluctuate considerably, and promo prices tend not to have a wide-ranging effect on prices across the board. When there is a new offer, there are absolutely certain cruises that become cheaper, but not every sailing. So, repeat cruisers also know the importance of tracking prices over the long haul and repricing when possible to lock in savings. But, of course, the virtue of the fact that a new sale exists does not necessarily mean there will be a new discount available to you. So you've got to keep an eye out on that over the long term. The next thing I see repeat cruisers posting all the time is that mask suntan meme. In 2020, a lot of things have changed. And obviously with the introduction of face masks into routine society, a lot of people have started to wonder if, you know, face masks are going to be a big part of cruising going forward. And you've probably seen this photo of a couple who are on vacation and have sunburned faces, but not where their face mask was. And ever since the cruise industry has shut down, the idea of having to wear a mask on a cruise ship has popped up. And no doubt you've probably seen this photo because I'm not sure people think it's still funny or they think that it's the first time they've seen it. But like all memes, it's funny to some people, but this one gets shared a lot. So there you go. Certainly something you'll be looking forward to seeing probably for oh, quite a while, I'd imagine. And apologies to whoever this couple is because they're now notorious in the cruise industry. Something else that repeat cruisers post all the time is when is blank of the seas coming back to blank? New ship deployments are a big deal because it means potentially new itineraries to book and repeat cruisers have a long memory and will usually post about how they wish a certain Royal Caribbean ship would return to a specific home port. This is really common among our British friends who have a strong affinity for certain ships, but Americans also miss their favorite ships sailing from ports near them. 
So inevitably, you will see comments about when is Independence of the Seas coming back to Southampton? Or when is Grandeur of the Seas coming back to Baltimore? Or when is this other ship coming back to this port? It's something that gets posted all the time by repeat cruises because they have their favorites, just like everybody, and they want it near their hometown. The next thing that gets posted a lot is the main dining room isn't as good as it used to be. Perhaps no topic is as subjective as food, and cruisers are not shy about sharing their opinion on the state of food on a cruise ship. Whether they yearn for the midnight buffet to return or think the main dining room has gone downhill, a lot of repeat cruisers do not hesitate to talk about the state of dining as they see it. The rise of specialty dining across Royal Caribbean ships, and really the whole industry, has convinced some people that the quality of food in the main dining room has degraded as a result. I don't agree with this at all, but it's definitely a hotly debated topic. I think that certainly a lot has changed. Change is always happening in the cruise industry, and things are not the same today anywhere on a cruise ship as they were 20 years ago, 30 years ago, or even longer. But I don't think the quality has changed in the main dining room. Certainly some of the dishes have, and the menu has certainly reflected that. But, you know, I always felt that while there are always hit and misses in any dining room, I've always felt that the quality, the attention to service, and the overall experience of the main dining room remains the same. And it wasn't like they were ever serving filet mignon in the main dining room or there was anything else crazy being offered that has been scaled back. I believe that the main dining room experience with the attention of the waiters and the ambiance is certainly still there, and I love it. If there was one thing I would love to change about the main dining room is more live music in there. There used to be more live piano music being played, which I always enjoyed. I think it's nice to have a little classical music with dinner, but that's just me. But overall, I don't agree with this one, but you'll see this comment all the time. The next thing that people post all the time is something that I definitely think is wrong is, quote, I booked directly with the Royal Caribbean because I want to be in control of my reservation. Old habits are, of course, the hardest to break, and this applies to how repeat cruisers book their cruises. The most common hesitation from loyal cruisers that I hear why they don't want to use a travel agent to book their cruise is because they value being able to pick up the phone and call Royal Caribbean to book, cancel, or alter the reservation. And while it is definitely true that using a travel agent means the agent is the one that can modify a reservation, I think that's a great change. I take no joy in dialing the cruise line, having to talk to a representative to make changes, give them my social security number or my birth date or my phone number again, and having to make those kind of changes on my own or reprice a cruise when instead I just text my travel agent and they do it on my behalf. I think everybody should use a good travel agent. I think it's a great idea and you only stand the benefit by using one. So the idea that you're losing out on control over the reservation is simply silly in my opinion and you're only losing out on added service by not using a good travel agent the next thing that a lot of repeat cruisers post is how many cruises they have booked right now and i am totally guilty of this one because no matter how many cruises are coming up i love to share the excitement of saying i have this many cruises coming up there something that only repeat cruisers think is normal is having a bunch of cruises reserved with multiple cruises in one calendar year if you're a repeat cruiser and you never talk to a friend or a family member who really doesn't cruise at all and you tell them that you have, you know, four, five, ten cruises in a year, to us, that doesn't sound so much. It's like, oh, okay, that's fine. But to other people, they will think you are absolutely crazy. Now, people that do not cruise a lot are often surprised to hear how often cruise fans go on a cruise, but those of us that cruise all the time see nothing odd about it at all. And the last thing that people that cruise all the time seem to say all the time is they wish for smaller cruise ships to be built. Whether their idea of small is a Radiance class or Voyager class or Empress of the Seas, people that have cruised a lot tend to have a favorite size of ships and lament the bigger and bigger trend in the cruise industry. Whenever Royal Caribbean announces it has ordered a new ship or a new ship is delivered, it is not uncommon to run across a comment from somebody that wishes Royal Caribbean would build a new ship that is significantly smaller than an Oasis or Quantum class ship. If you're wondering why ships get bigger and bigger, it's because something called the economy of scale and the bottom line is Royal Caribbean will only be building bigger ships because they make more money. They're more profitable. And as a for-profit company, that's going to be their name of the game. And certainly while the economy of scale that makes bigger ships so much more profitable will prevent likely this wish from ever coming true, you always have the option of going on a cruise ship that is on one of the sister brands of Royal Caribbean like Celebrity Cruises, Azamar, or Silver Sea, which definitely do have those smaller vessels. So there you have it, the top eight things that people that cruise all the time seem to say all the time. And I want to know in the comments, which of these have you heard before? Did I miss a common cruise trope? I'd love to hear about it 
in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications. That's that little bell icon that lets you know when there's a brand new video on here. So that way you don't miss out on any of the fun. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.